What are you advertising? The little free library. I'm gonna do a little extra advertisement. Okay, come. Me? There are a lot of books. All for free. Yeah, can you tell her how the library works? You see, um, I'll act it. I'm the actor. You see, well, they go walking, and, and then they go open it and take a book. So you like books then? Oh God, yes. I read continuously. I don't have a television. I did change the sign. It, the sign is supposed to say, take a book, bring a book. People have taken that to mean, oh, I can keep the book. Thank you. Bye. And I got slightly tired of that. So I changed it to borrow a book, bring a book back or bring a different book to share with your neighbors. So um, this project, it's about these things right here, these little libraries. So um, first question is, have you, tell me what you know about these things. Have you seen any across the neighborhood? There's actually a couple, just within a couple block radius. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, looks like someone put a lot of time and effort into this. Yeah, take a look. Can you, can you buy them? No, mm -hmm. you actually, um, we've been doing a lot of research on them and you actually, you grab a book and you can rent it and bring it back. You can put books in there. I actually had a meeting with a lady who lives here. She's a really nice lady. So uh, you've never you've never seen these things? Well, I've seen them walking around, but I've never taken a book out of there. I think it's uh, pretty cool. Maybe boost social capital a little bit. Yeah, you think it's a good idea? Yeah, I mean, why? Unless, you know, some ruffians coming around here and doing whatever, just breaking it or something. Yeah, this lady here actually, see. this lady here actually said that, um. She's had a lot of people come and take books, and they never even bring them back. So, well, that's so, just foul. That is foul. Uh, people can take what they want, and they don't have to bring it back. Mm -hmm. um, they can keep it, and um, we have a little. I put a flyer in that talks about what it is, and I say pay it forward. So if you love the book, you could keep it, but it would be nice to bring something else back or to pass it on to another library or another person that you think would like it. The thing about, you know, regular libraries is, is uh, you know, that we have things cataloged, so you can, you can depend on something being here. You should be able to be depend on it. You can search a catalog and you can see it's on the shelf or checked out. Mm -hmm. The thing with the little libraries is you don't know what's in there. There's no record of what's on the shelf. You just go and you see. And if it tickles your fancy, you take it. And you may trade or you may not trade, but mm -hmm. so is, there's a serendipity there. And what so. makes Little Feet Library different from this fabulous library mm -hmm. that's here? Oh, probably access, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, you hope that everybody would know that we have this wonderful thing available in walking distance in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. but sometimes, like, I've talked to people in the neighborhood, oh, we have a library really close. Whatever we paid for this, like, 300 some dollars, mm -hmm. this isn't $300 worth of material, but whatever they get above and beyond the material goes back into putting other libraries or empowering other projects that they do for literacy. Sure. So it's not just a local, put a library in your neighbor, in your uh, yard, but also um, they're doing this across the world, across the globe. We all know that we have libraries in our house. We call them the library. You know, do you lend from it? Some people do and some people don't. Some, some people, it's a collection that, you know, it's their precious you know, collection and, you know, this is their favorite things and they're not going to lend them. 
And so then that begs the question, these little libraries, you know, you know what gets put in there, the precious or the sloughed off? I have to be careful that, um, just like in food shelves, we have a food shelf at our church, and we notice that the largest number of items that come in are cans of green beans. <laughs> and green beans seem to be that thing that become prolific in people's homes. And when they've finally had enough of them, let's shuffle them out to the food shelves. And uh, you have to be careful that uh, you're not just putting your unwanted books out in the little library. Collect it privately in our home and be proud of our collection and have it say something about who we are as individuals. And then when we die, our collection lives on and gets passed on generation to generation. Or should we be done reading and pop it out in the you know, yard and see what happens to it? It'll go somewhere, we may never know where it went. Kind of an interesting, what should we do with our resources? How should we share? You know. Right now, about half the books are books that I have not put in. Mm, so exciting. I don't know where they've come from, who put them in there, but um, that's what makes it really fun. Mm -hmm. So so is it a lending library uh, just a way to not throw away a book, just because it feels wrong to throw away a text sometimes? You know, I think most of us have so many books that you could not get them thrown away in a lending library. And not only that, the whole, I thought the whole purpose was that it's a trade, so how you can throw anything away. Mm -hmm. You might end up, I can see this, bottom line, end up, um, lowest common denominator. Everybody's tra trading their worst books. Oh, because if everybody's sense. trying to get rid of one, mm -hmm. and they keep getting everything that someone else, you know, eventually, when you think about it, eventually these books are just going to go round and round in the neighborhood, potentially. Mm -hmm. And you can say, oh, I've seen this book. And for the selection of your books, do you just put in books that you like in there, or do you put... Um, well, I only read science fiction. Oh, okay. And a few English authors, so I put a lot of science fiction in, and some of it is still there. You see, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. The person who put the book there may have the intent, of sharing a precious, precious truth or finding or discovery or mm. author or something. I, I'd like to do that. Mm. You know, I put I put Annie Dillard in every one I did. I would buy a stack of Annie Dillard books. <laughs> and seed seed these places because you know I mean it's good news, right? Sure. Um, I have certain things you will never see a Harlequin romance, and if I found one there, I would put it in the recycling. One less. I, 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 I have a tendency towards, okay, it's book burning. It's Harlequin romance. It's <laughs> really strict. <laughs> no, I mean, you, you can put something in there that tickles one person's fancy and absolutely disgusts someone else. You're right to ask because different people have their oh, yeah. own and ideas of how It is on someone's lawn, yeah. so it's like it is the yeah. control. Yeah. But and that was something, you know, like one person I know is really open to whatever goes in and another person is like, oh, you know, if I see something that seems at all like an advertisement or something that you'd have to pay to see, she takes it out. You know, oh, everybody okay. has Polices their it. own idea. Yeah. Sure. This one's a new note. I remember seeing this one last week. Ooh, this was one of my favorite books when I was a kid. World of Thunder, Hear My Cry, Melody Taylor. Ooh, that's a good, a good one. Book. I've now added murder mysteries and stuff that is softer reading, yeah. The sort that women are supposed to read that I don't read. I just picked up recently how do dinosaurs say goodnight for him and I That's bring so home cute. yeah I know I bring home these kids books for him and maybe an adult book for me mm -hmm. and sometimes I drop off if we end up having two or three copies of one of his books we drop one of those off mm -hmm. so we just kind of keep it going I never keep yes. one long enough for more than a week so sure I just keep circulating them it's kind of fun to throw in something from my library and see what pops up next week so. I teach here in the house violin and I have ah. students passing every day and every day somebody will either comment on a book or my students will put books in or they'll check books out. So I'm getting dialogue about this practically every day. I think also, you know, 
the anonymity as a part of it that empowers a little bit too because they're not interested in going into the library or going into a bookstore or talking to you on your porch. It, they, they can come, there's little risk. They don't have to interact with anybody and so uh, I don't have to do much to get a book so I can stop by here and look quick, nobody around and grab a book or two and be on my way, you know. And I think that low risk, uh, because we're probably, as much as it's a community thing, a neighborhood thing, it's more about empowering people to read. Mm -hmm. It's fun when I see somebody from in the house uh, when I see them out here mm -hmm. um, and I get very excited because it's like yay somebody's looking for a book. Do you ever come out and talk to people who are? Sometimes but you don't want to like make them uncomfortable either. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't come out just so that it can remain that anonymous you know search of their own. By and large the landscape of this neighborhood is pretty inviting. Like if you just look down the street it's pretty open. Even when there's fencing, most of it is chain link. So it's pretty visible. It's not a, there's not a lot of like um, privacy fencing in the front yards. And have you met people from the little library so far? A, a, a few people, not yeah. many. Deliberately or otherwise, you're creating a psychology about where you live. By the choices that you make, how you handle your property. And this is clearly a very deliberate choice to invite people in. So I'm hoping to help, it will help make barriers, it will give me an excuse to talk to people. And it's often easier to have some thing to talk about. I feel great if, you know, even if somebody just takes and doesn't give it back, I feel like they're going to give back in some way. It's going mm -hmm. to come around, you know, just sharing that love of books. I suppose you make it what you want. Yeah. I mean, that's his, That's it, isn't it? 